In this example, we are told that f prime of x is 4x squared. And that's f prime, that's the derivative of f is 4x squared. And we're told to find the general equation for f. Okay, so that's the equation that has this 4x squared as its derivative. So we might think this is going to be a 4x cubed. But if we take the derivative of this, what do we get? Remember, we're trying to find a function here that has this as its derivative. So what happens when we take the derivative of this, 4x cubed? Well, the derivative there is 12x squared. We need it to be 4x squared. So we need to divide by 3 here. Now, if we take the derivative of that, we get 4 thirds times 3x squared, which is that. So this is it. This is function f. f of x is 4x cubed over 3 plus c. And that's the general equation. This c could be any number. So we don't have a specific equation for, the, for, for f. It could be any of these equations. This is an infinite number of possibilities right here. Now we're told to find the particular equation for f if f of 0 equals 2. So think about this. This is a cubic. So let me make a little sketch over here. That could be a cubic. But it shifted up or down some amount. So it could be any of these cubics. And there are an infinite number of possible cubics. Okay, But only one of them is going to go through this point. An x value of 0, a y value of 2. So if we imagine some axes here, only one of these is going to go through this particular point. So this piece of information, and, and this is common, you'll see a lot of problems like this. One piece of information allows you to go from an infinite number of possibilities to a single possibility. And that's basically the same as finding this number c. So let's do that for this particular problem. And we'll, we'll get the particular equation that fits this piece of information. So all, all we do is plug in this information. f of 0 is 2. So this means if x is 0, the value of the function is 2. So this is going to be 2. I'm going to write 2 equals. And then my function here, I'm going to have a value of 0 plugged in for x. So this is going to be 4 times 0 cubed over 3. Oh, that's obviously going to be 0. So if all of that is 0, then you can see that c equals 2. So the particular equation then is this. f of x is equal to 4x cubed over 3 plus 2. That's the particular equation that fits this piece of information. OK, here's one more f prime of x is negative 2 cosine 4x. Find the general equation for f of x. OK, what function has this as its derivative? f of x will equal what? What has negative 2 cosine 4x as its derivative? Well, let's see. Maybe negative 2 sine 4x. Let's try that. If we take the derivative of this, do we get that? Well, the derivative of this, let's, um, I'm going to just come over here and scribble this out. The derivative of this is going to be negative 2 cosine 4x times the derivative of the inner function, times 4. So that's pretty close to what I was looking for, except I have this extra 4 multiplier there, which I need to get rid of. I want this to come out to equal that. So I need to put a 4 in the denominator there. So over 4. And now if I take the derivative of this, I will get that. And this obviously should be simplified, the 2 there and the 4 there. So I'll write f of x is equal to negative sine 4x over 2. And if you wanted to write that as negative 1 half sine 4x, that would be fine. And we need the plus c. So that's the general equation for f of x. Then we're told to find the particular equation. 
if f of pi over 8 equals 0.5. Okay, f of pi over 8 equals 0.5. Let's take this piece of info and plug it in. So the value of the function will be 0.5. That's going to be right here. That will be 0.5. So let's write 0 0.5 equals f of pi over 8. I need to plug in an x value of pi over 8 right there. So this is going to be negative, negative sign. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this equation here. We're plugging in a pi over 8 right there. Negative sign 4 times pi over 8 over 2 plus c. Okay, what's 4 times pi over 8? Well, that's pi over 2. And the sine of pi over 2, if you remember your unit circle, pi over 2 is a rotation around to this point right there. And the sine right there is 1. So this, this uh, sine function right there evaluates to 1 at that x value. So I'm going to rewrite all of this now. I'm going to say 0 0.5 is equal to negative 1 over 2 plus c. And then it's pretty easy to see that c has to be 1. Because 0 0.5 is negative 1 half plus 1. So now we can write the particular equation. f of x is this but we now know that c is 1. So it's negative sine 4x over 2 plus 1. That's the particular equation that fits that piece of given information.